So at this point, I decided, sasa this time, this time nita end life yangu, by force. Na kumechoka. Yeah, Sinimetrai pills, all those things, sazijawak. This time, I'm going to look for something that I'm sure it may take life yangu to mm. I went and um, I bought poison. And I locked myself in the house. Told my mom, nimeenda shule ni karudi. Uh, nika ingia na back door ya nyumba yangu, it closed. So, akiangalia na wana misi iko. Oh, okay. It was eight in the morning. Uh, I took uh, like two cups of very strong poison. Um, and I was sure you ili kui mend life ya mse, flani kwa village yetu. Maze, I called my friends, told them I loved them, called my sister. And that's it. There was this person that Ali Kuja in Kenya to see me mm. before Etana and everything happened while I was doing covers. Mm. Ali Kuja kasema, Mimi ni meona music yako mm. and I will make you a star. But you'll only become successful if you work with me. If you don't, you won't. I will ensure. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I will ensure. You go nowhere. Well, you will not succeed. Did you work with that person? No. Yeah, because what? I did not. But things became hard after I said no to him. Aye, me, I'm telling you. Of collaborating with it on a Sunday, yeah. Maybe not today, not tomorrow, but me know it I go up and someday, yeah. So my sing say, someday it I go up and someday. Someday What's up, everybody, and welcome to Tuka Extra. My name is Lily Aisha, and today I'm chilling with one guy, man. This guy has made it. Well, you think you've made it? <laughs> Sorry, this guy has made it. He's been among the people who have been nominated for the Grammys, courtesy of Etana, being part of her album, hey, the Pamoja album. He has an amazing voice. There's so much we need to learn about him. And today, that's the sit down I'm having. Karibu Sano Michael Bundy. Thank you so much. Thank you for having Thanks us in your studio. You're welcome. Yeah, hapa tutafanya do re mi do in Zimwa because I'm very distracted. <laughs> but yes, Michael Abariako. Poor Sano. How are you feeling today? And I feel poor. Mm -hmm. I feel good having you here. Uh, and you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. So let's just start maybe to get to know you, yeah. where you've come from. Because of course, see, tunakuja, tulikuja, actually, ukianza na covers, tukaono mesonga, one million. Mwafanya cover ina hit one million. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> so yeah, maybe we can just take us through from like where you came from, and then you can take us through to how you got into the music scene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, my name is Michael Bundy. I was born in uh, Meru, mm. Kenya, and uh, I wasn't born uh, into music, but my family was so much into music. My dad was a music teacher. My brother was uh, a, a, an avid reggae fan. Mm -hmm. So I grew up listening to Bob Marley, listening to uh, Eric Donaldson, such kinds of people. But I never once uh, thought I would become a musician. Though I used to have so many dreams of being a worldwide star. Well, but sasa Mimi, I never told anyone mm. about that. Because mm. in the corner on Kambi, I'll say, I'll be a star one day. They'll be like, check him, say. Eh, check him, say. <laughs> <laughs> like, how? Yeah. You know, but at, at the age of five, I dreamt performing with T-Pain hey. back then. Uh -huh. So um, life went on. And as I joined uh, uh, a primary school, I started uh, singing in the choirs. Then I was kicked out a couple of times. Gambo, I'm a terrible singer. Oh. I was a terrible singer. I wasn't born a good singer, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, so when I was kicked out of all the choirs, I tried to form my own choir, Sasa. And it got to a point where uh, we we were fighting against the school the choir. The school choir. <laughs> It got a point we overthrew them in terms of fan base, and hey. my choir became the school choir now. Umependuwa <laughs> serikali. Yeah. primary. Mm -hmm. uh, it went really well. That's when I wrote my first song, and when Nilingia Form 1, I recorded my first audio. That was like uh, 
10 or 11 years plus ago. From one, you're recording. I recorded my first song. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I got into high school now, um, things became a little tricky because um, of uh, there was so much bullying and all that. And in school? Uh, yeah, in school, mm -hmm. in high school. I was bullied a lot because I, very s I was very small. Mm. I was very small and uh, <laughs> I used to wear the bed in high school. Mm. So I was like, I was bullied and I had so many punishments, oh yeah. you know? Mm. So one day, because of uh, all that stuff, I decided, ah, Mimi, I'm tired of, uh, of uh, living this life on that time. And at that point, I, I remember I was on medication because of uh, episodes of depression. Oh, I was okay. on constant medication because primary school all the time. So on that day, on that fateful day, that's the day that actually changed my life in Ninge music fully. Because I woke up in the morning and then, as usual, I had wet the bed. And then, basically, I was told to clean like half of the dormitory. Sure just because of that. <laughs> they were exaggerating it. So I cleaned half of the dormitory. Kufika class, nilikuwa nafika nine. Kapata teacher. Asha ingia. Akani piga, akani tuma kwa principal. Nika pigwa. Nika pigwa na like, I know only pigwa na so many teachers. And then I was told to go and kneel in the school parade. So, uh, I knelt, walikuwa na hizi kokoto kwa. So you have to kneel there. It's painful. Yes, you have to kneel there for like the whole day. So after I was done kneeling there, I was like, ah, Mazemi, I'm done with this life. I'm tired of living like this, you know. Back at home, it's bad. In school, it's bad. Mimi, I went to the class. Wengine uh, wakienda see you in the evening. I went to class. Decided, ah, Mimi, easy medication zangu. I'm taking all of them. Probably it feel better. Took all my medication at that time. And at that time, I, I think I, I, something happened. I don't know what happened. But when I woke up, I found myself in the hospital. And then I was basically asked to call my parents and Nini. Yeah. And then I called them. And uh, I blacked out for the next, uh, probably like a day. Didn't wake up. Woke up the next day to my whole family there. Um, and at that point, the doctor said, Umse, I was so depressed. You guys could have lost him. Mm. Take him out of that school. school. Take him to a better school. I was like, I'm going to go to Because I was going high school in Meru. I said, I'm going to go to Nairobi. And my bro said, fine, let's go tomorrow. Let's go. When I came to Nairobi, that's when I met the producers that taught me music. Basically, my whole life in music. Ilianzi um, Damn, I don't think I was ready for that, that one. Mm. So wait, um, but like you're talking about you were in high school uh. and you said you had depression prior to even being in high school. That yeah. was even in primary school. Yeah. Do you know what triggered or you just? Oh, yes, I know. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I grew up in a violent home. Mm -hmm. So uh, my most of my childhood memories is like a story. Your mom is bleeding, you know. Uh, I remember one time niliona my mom coming from far because nilikuwa na mgoja kwa gate. Mm. And then I saw like she was carrying bread. So I ran towards her and I was so happy and said, mom, let her bread. And then when I got to her, I noticed that it's her hand that was uh, broken. So it looked like oh a plaster. Oh. I knew how that happened because I watched it happen, you know. So uh, I used to see that happen so much to my mom and all that. And I was honestly probably scared about leaving her at home. Madani kiwa boarding school, they were like, hey, is my mom how okay? Is my mom, yeah. You know, I, I want to go to my mom and all that. And actually, the first time, the, the first time nilikuwa ni metraiyo to take my life was in class five. It was that bad for me, your time. But that time I was saved by the school then. Were you class. still on medication, on depressive? After that, it was only on lingia, antidepressants. Oh, okay. Yeah, because mm -hmm. of, I was also told, that some of the health issues I was struggling with were because of depression, oh. like the bedwetting, all oh that. Oh, yeah, 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 that could be a cause. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So, and then, like you said, so you used to see this happen a lot in your home. Yes. And for you, it wasn't easy for you being, of course, in a boarding school. Yes. And now we have come to a point you're in Nairobi. You've come to Nairobi yeah. to be with your brother. Yes. The same, you went to the same school with your brother. 
Uh, no, different no. school. Different school. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, umefika Nairobi, umetoka Meru. Yeah. After, <laughs> and how was, okay, before we actually get to Nairobi, after you, you're in the hospital, you've been given your medication also still, were, were you still put under antidepressants anti after that? No, s the doctors were like, uh, who say, I keep a easy dawa tena. He might take his life he again. He might take his life again. Mm -hmm. They were determined not to give me those pills again. But then, when you were in it off those med medica that medication, again I went off balance tena because you know I'd never gone to therapy or anything yeah. or anything. Mm. So nearly go back into depression even when I came to Nairobi again. So it never stopped the 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 att attempts to take my life. They actually got more. I was like even more determined back when I came to Nairobi because I came to Nairobi, joined a school uh, called Kadino Tunga in Kawasukari. Mm. I did really well. And then I remember at one point I, I got all the awards like in music, in class, oh, wow. in everything. Mm. And I was getting straight A's and I was the best in the whole school. And then at one point my dad came to visit us on the prize giving day. I was given all those awards and he never said anything. So I was like, why am I even studying? Oh, like, you know, and mm. he doesn't, I was basically, I was always looking for my dad's approval. Mm. I guess I still am. I don't know. But after uh, after that, I was like, hey, Mazemi, I'm not studying anymore. Because I was doing this for, for my dad. For him, and he's not <laughs> seeing this. You know, and, uh, but I realized later, he appreciated it. He just never said it. So after that, Nikarudi is to severe depression, Bado Nairobi. I started sneaking out of school to go to the studio mm. to learn music production. That's how I got into it. So my bro was uh, not okay with me doing that because... I came to study. To school, yeah. Well, I was uh, basically given an ultimatum, choose music or school. Or school. So I decide, if you choose music, you go back to? Meru. To Meru. I chose music. That's your high school. Sengine unaiza kuwa a bit kichuangumu. Though I understand Kenya liku anasema because he was like, just finish this and then we support your music, you know? Um, so I chose music. Was sent back to Meru. My dad was like, me I'm not taking you in. Where, where will you go? <laughs> My sister said, I'll take him in. Your sister is in Meru? Yeah, she mm. was in a place uh, called Tarakanidi. Hakani chukua, hakani peleka uko. Uko life ya kwa so hard. Like, nikapata even more bullies sasa. You know, even more bullies. Did you go back to school, Lama? I went back to school there sasa. There, mm-hmm. Mm more bullies. And then... Uh, I had the soft life in Nairobi. <laughs> so when I woke up, I needed to cycle, like you're cycling like seven kilometers in every morning, and then I was going to school. My boys wanted to buy a bike, so I came home, took my bike, and I took my bike to come and I. Oh, me choka, man. I took the pills again. This time, I looked for them myself. Hospitalized again. It was a really bad. It was not good what I was doing. But then I wasn't understanding the full effect of it. I missed a key life in a kai, you know. So my sister after you say, because if something happens I here I can't watch this. You know, yeah. I love him and he needs to be at, at another place. So Naya Kasema. Oh Nikamombi actually I want to go back to Nairobi. Who can do me not some went back to Nairobi. I couldn't go to my brother's place during Kata Masomo, mm. right? Mm. <laughs> so I went and uh, that's the first time I nearly after Keja on my own. Nikiwa form two. Form, form two. Ni current Keja na bestiango. After a few months, I don't know what happened. <laughs> uh, I think ni story two za madem. I came one day home and I found out that bestiango wa mehama na kila kitu. <laughs> Kupata wa mehama, the whole house was empty. Empty. Then with my things. So Nikabaki says I'm on the street. I have nowhere to sleep. Uh, at this time, I called my dad and said that I have no one else. Me, I need to come back home now because. You know. <laughs> yeah, went back to Mary. Said I won't take you to school. You go and farm or do something else because I may try my best. Mom, mom pleaded. Nikapeleko shulengi ne. Kibirichia boys. I'm going to many schools. Went there, bullying again. Nika hepa shule. Nika kuja Nairobi. While I'm on my way to Nairobi, 
nikaishi na fair <laughs> so when i a place flani na itwa chuka mm. i met this guy mwenye alikuwa nani and i did sorry like where are you going like i can give you a ride kama wazazi wako wanaishi ka askari i also live there ndakupeleka okay. so kumbe is interrogating me because me my parents don't live in nairobi <laughs> <laughs> so i was like nikiingia gari home say to vike kahawa mm. and then alisema ndani peleka mpaka home kwa wazazi things Shinda. would go bad badly mm-hmm. so um i can discover to nime pashule because he asked me ebu give me your dad's number nim call akam call akamwambia niko na mtoto wako tunakuja naye Nairobi <laughs> my dad was like Nairobi, Nairobi. wapi sit <laughs> komeru <laughs> bana yeah and uh, basically akani tia pingu station my dad uh, found a way nikakuwa nikatoka uh-huh. and then uh, when he rode home he was like me i'm tired you know i can't take you to school anymore i just bought new uniform eh yo shule ngine au jamaliza one term like unataka aje yeah. and i told my dad just dad ni set up studio that's all i need mr kim so but uh my mom ali find a way i can't have to a, a day school akasema mimi nitalipa al al farm baka nilipe yo shule just register your exam so sasa hizi nilikuwa naona eh hey, my life ni messed up si easy do music tena i'm never going back to nairobi mm. so at this point i decided sasa this time this time nita end life yangu by force na kumechoka eh, si nimetry pills all those things azijawak this time i'm going to look for something that i'm sure it may take life yangu mwingine and it, it seems i feel so bad when i look back at my life and those decisions i was making because i was like because i've lost many friends to suicide and all that so i really feel bad about the decisions kama hizo but back then i was like i need to look for something to end my life mm. I went and um, I bought poison. And I locked myself in the house. I told my mom nimeenda shule nikarudi. Ah uh, nikaingia na back door ya nyumba yangu closed. So akiangalia naona mimi siko. It was 8 in the morning. Uh, I took uh, like two cups of very strong poison. Um and I was sure you ile kwa mental life ya msee fulani kwa village yetu. Maze I called my friends told them I loved them called my sister and that's it 8 nika what whatever happened between 8 and 5 sikujua but 8 in the morning nili take oh, yeah. medicine yeah. I woke up at 5 in the evening but sasa before I woke up something happened um I had like this feeling like this dream is almost like I was drowning and sasa because I I I don't know how to swim in real life. Mm. I found myself in a situation where nilikuwa na drown. So at this point I could see a city, a really beautiful city and I said I me I just want to go there and find peace because it looks so beautiful. Mm. Before I knew it as I was drowning someone grabbed my hand. All of a sudden niko kwa show. Next to me is a beautiful city of gold I'm like mazeni mefika mimi kutoka leo my life is perfect. Yeah, okay. And then nikiangali on the side I saw myself lying down. So I saw my body lying down there and I was standing here. And I was like like what's happening? And then someone came. This guy alikuwa na try to resuscitate. Kutoa maji kwa tumbo yenye imeingia in the dream now. So ana anafanya CPR. I don't know if CPR kuna kitu alikuwa anafanya aki aki press kwa stomach or kwa chest. Before I knew it nilikuwa na vomit ile maji. The same time nilikuwa na vomit ile maji kwa dream I woke up in real life nika vomit poison oh. all of it was the worst smell I had ever in this world I vomited for minutes mm. So that guy before ni toke huko huko mali nilikuwa whatever it was in that dream he said next time you try this you're going to die That's it even when I said kutoka hiyo day I was like never mimi I don't know what happened if this is kama hii ni dream or whatever it is but me i'm sure whom sell ni ambi if you try to kill yourself again what i'm going to die mm. so me i was like maze i need to find new ways of dealing with whatever i'm going through it Not seems said, yeah. si fai, it, it seems like uh, because i it seems like god has another plan for me so mimi i am not doing that again i need to go to therapy or something and that was the point where sasa my life started changing because i started looking for other solutions other than poisoning yourself other yeah. than that so 
before I knew it, I was in Nairobi, in Maliza High School. And my dad was true to his word. In Maliza High School, even my dad can purchase equipment to study. Oh, wow. He bought me my speakers, he bought me my piano, my mic, everything. And he said, now do the music. He took me to a music school I studied. And he said, now follow your passion. Mm. And I started doing it. All this you're doing it in Meru? No, now so I, I, I came sasa. to Nairobi, yes, and I uh, looked for a kakeja. Mm. Started in Kansas Life too. Liko wana ishi kwa kakeja ya 2K back then, Kansas Life. And that's how I built uh, this. Uh, Who you are now. Yeah. That's how you started. Okay, yeah. that's very interesting. What? Mm. Man, I'm sorry for what you went through. Thank but you. at least it's it's something that taught you. And that, that dream was heavy. That dream learning that mm. I need to look for other ways to set yeah. myself to, you know, to start growing myself and not give my life away. There's so much more for you, man. Imagine yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, yeah. now yeah. you're in Nairobi, you set up your studio, and yeah. or rather you have your equipment. Had you st set up awesome by then? Not yet. Uh, not yet. But you had an idea of what you wanted, yes. yeah? Yes. But okay, so koko yo keja yako, ya 2K, umesema ya 2K. Na equipment wadu uko nazo tu hapo ndani. Eko a flow, nilikuwa, zote zilikuwa kwa flow. Mm -hmm. I had equipment, but zilikuwa zina kwa flow na mimi. Sisi wote wiu tulikuwa nalala kwa flow. Nalala kwa flow. You know, and, and I was still a caretaker. Nilikuwa na usha nyumba na nini. And mm. I was cleaning toilets and all that. And... Sasa venye ninaendelea na hii life wase wakaanza kunidharau sana you know I don't know why wase sometimes you look down to wase wenye ni caretakers mm. but then wase walikuwa wamedharau sana so especially uh, the elderly people kwa hiyo plot they made life so hard for me mm. so one day me sasa una join liko na demu yangu hiyo time um, one day she tells me eh hey, maze like how wase wanakudharau you'll still keep doing this job for how long mm. Like, Maze, you need to find a way out of this. So, Mimi, one day I told uh, the landlord, Mimi, I'm not being we a caretaker. Take us Kase mu utalipa hii nyumba 4K, basi, C2K. Hey, ni kajwa mi ni kubaya. Because I used, I didn't used to make even more than 3K a month. Oh. Ilikuwa so hard. So, riani pesa yako yote ni kwa rent, na matumizi. Eh, hey. mm. na yo time, ina expect my first ball. Oh. Uh, yo time ina expect my first ball. <laughs> And uh, the funny thing was that I actually really wanted to have a son. With 3,000 a month? Yes. Where? I wanted to have a son. Mm -hmm. And getting my first son was not accidental at all. It was actually planned. Me, mm. I mm. want to have a child. And I feel like it brings so much into my life. Growth even, you blessings. Know. Yeah, so at this time, uh, took almost nine months uh, into that. The pregnancy. Uh, landlord, I'm saying, you need to vacate this house. Because you, at you are complaining, it, it's raining here. Go to a place, Mali. Akunyeshi. I told him, I'll sue you. He said, do you have money? <laughs> 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 he said, Sasa wewe kijana mdogo, I have money. You cannot do anything. Hakuna mali utanipeleka. Kesho, I'm sending vijana wakuja kwa yu studio wako. Toys of it was in change. <laughs> Because my mom is pregnant. Okay, and she's pregnant. She's pregnant. It's almost uh, due the due date. Sasa, mimi nika toka nika bia mama, mimi naenda kutafuta keja 11k. Na ukumbuke saizi nalipa 4k na inanishinda. Mm. Nambia mimi naenda kutafuta keja 11k. Kani ambi utalipa aji, nambia sejui. Tutajulia mbele. Nika ena nika pata keja. Nika ambia wewe utaleta 22k pamoja na deposit. The deposit, yeah. Sini the next day na kuja kufukuzwa. Ah, nika save namba ya huyo mwenye keja as nika save our next house in faith. Kasema hindi wa keja angu. Kwenda home. Um, nilikuwa na do business kidogo ya kuza mics nini. So that day I had like a sound card ya interface yangu ya studio. And I was like, mimi I'm gonna sell this interface, but I'm gonna sell it for 24k. Value yake ilikuwa 12k. Mm. So... I put it online. Immediately, song of Lani, wa westia ka Nikola Kasema. I want that for my son. But uh, you'll give it to me for 12K. So, because, nika wambia bana miya ni 24, kani mbia pana, you know, mimi, I have connections ata maju. I can order it for my son. Mm. Ata kutoka uko. So, well, later, nikupea 12K. Nika mbia mama, ni sawa, tunaezenda nyumba ya bed sitter. Mm. You know? 
Nkafika huko OST. Jamaa ka inspect. Mimi nilikuwa nimeisafisha. It's an old thing nimeisafisha. Iko na scratches. Mm. He looks at it and says, "Are you sure this is new?" You told me this is new. So you are many ngiza kwa VAT yake. Nina tense and sweating. Niko shum say at find out hiki tu nimetumia for long. But then akasema give it to my son angalie. Akaangalia akasema iko sawa. So mimi nangoja jamaa ni tole 12k. Do you know he gave me 25k? Wow. Akaongezea extra 1k. Sijui jua why he did that. Sijui sijui jua. He had said I'm giving you 12k. Yeah. He counted the cash 25. That same day, kena ngali pa keja. In faith. Yeah, ni kena ingia keja. Eleven k, one bedroom. We moved the next day before to kuzwe. Kutoka apo, life changed. Clients wa kanza kuingia studio. Oh wow. Immediately, my son was born. Things opened up so much. I don't know why. It's almost like he came with so many blessings. So what is so what's the man? Kujia na sani yake. Ndio yuko sahani. Bakuli mzima. <laughs> yeah, and actually, mm. that was the time nilifanya baby love ika blow up. Oh, wow. Wakati maisana liko meza mm. immediately. Baby love, wewe wangu mia wako wa mo. So, open doors for me. YouTube ikanza kungetia revenue. Ikanza kupata doa kulipa keja from YouTube. Mm. And that's, that was like the biggest turn around here. Yeah life yangu. Oh damn so unangalia ngamtu wako unasema ngatu uh, ukijua wewe. <laughs> wewe ndio my eh? Yeah. And at that time your girlfriend was not thinking me I'm going to leave this man. Actually she was not thinking like that because nakumbuka the only thing was like mimi nilikuwa namwambia alikuwa ananiambia now when, when you were, we were in the house yenye inanyesha mm. niambia mtu yeye kizaliwa you can't stay here. Cause yeah. Eh. And me I was like sasa where do you want us to go? You know, like there is no money for any other place, mm. and it's almost like God used the circumstances to force me out of that place mm. and out of my comfort zone. Nika changam kakiyasi. What? Yeah. All right. So now you're saying at a point where you have clients, YouTube doing mm. a couple do, so your music career seems to be yeah. in a grow, in yeah. a become something, something real. Yes. And now you're recording many songs. You're yes. recording even videos you've put up. Yes. Mm-hmm. So Sasa. Vitu zikaenda mrama tena. Ah. Izi covers ninafanya wasani wa original songs wakaanza kuzi uh, pull down or kuzi monetize fully. So oh. there was views coming in but no money. No money. Probably because you're getting more views than their songs are getting. <laughs> so exactly that was one of the things that was happening. Uh-huh. The only artist mwenye naweza sema ni support uh, when I was doing covers. The only artist was Jago. Nili duka vya yake ni kuvisha pete. Actually Jago shared the song. Uh-huh. He followed me on IG. Bakale he still follows me. Uh-huh. And he contacted me. You know, and he didn't like monetize it or anything. Ili kwa tu hapo. Uh, and that was really good. But when you're doing covers don't you use a different I don't know music terms but it's not the same yes. like you're, you're not doing it the same way so how can youtube then monetize I'm to say originally this is mine yes oh they own because they, they they own that yeah they own but it. then mm-hmm. there is a way i could share the the money oh f- with the cover artist and, and you the original uh. the cover artist hajandika song yes hajai mm. hajai nini but ame perform so mm. there is something that is called performance uh, royalties ah. so wase wa majuu like if you do cover zenye ni meduza kina maroon 5 mm. they usually tell you you can earn a certain percentage and they earn a certain percentage hapa kenya they were taking everything 100. so like for me baby love ilifika 1.7 million views i didn't get a coin from it okay. even one bob nikasema sasa hii edit cover zinaduza nini sasa na no, vile ni heavy eh na venye ni ni uh, a bit challenging mm. so i was like uh, mimi i need to stop doing covers But before I knew it someone in the US account the baby love cover mm-hmm. that that person turned out to be my current manager. Oh okay. So when she saw baby love she was looking for a reggae artist to work with in Africa for her son who was a music producer. Mm-hmm. So that person came into my life and uh, that changed everything. Damn. Yeah. You can write a book, you know that. I'm actually writing one. <sighs> 
you should right you now. really should that's <laughs> you have a very interesting story with so many lessons in every step of your life there's yeah. a lesson to learn from it yeah. Now at this point, now of course, of course, like I said, we got to know you through your covers, and then moving on. Now we are knowing you through performing, mm -hmm. or rather being part of Etana's album Pamoja. Yes. How <laughs> did you even get into that? Okay, she explained to us not to want to hear it from you. <laughs> uh, I when she came to Kenya, I used I, I always wanted to work with her because mm -hmm. I loved her music and her vibe, and then she's a really conscious person, like Gomazake see songs then yeah you know see wine and broken wine and all that mm. she's very conscious with her message so it's like i need to work with this artist so nika pigia my friends when you work on contacts na yeye mm. remember i was in the music industry still mm. hey wakani ambia uwezi meet etana it's etana not ngomo <laughs> hey kwanza when you schedule yake go planned mm. i was in gain that schedule so I was like, uh, the only thing I can do is to do a song, put it online, her attention. to to me uh, the power of social media. So I did a song. I remember, I, I remember actually when I did that song called a song for Itana. Mm. We had slept hungry with my family for like a week. Nikona views siyezi ambia mtu sina pesa because. Mini msani ba. Mini msani. Ukona views kwanza wase wala kuliza. Wapay, do, no, no, mm. See the other way around. So I remember I used to give my son what was available and uh, the mother and Mimi Ninge stay hungry because we could not have a food for everyone. everyone. That's when I decided, e life to Nasafa. Even if I do this song and the Tanaka like for a song, na Mimi, I don't lose anything. Yeah. You know? So I did it, put it online. And then I did a short video called Tweet and Kambi Asim as they helped me. Uh, get this to a to a tana. Hey, Kenyans never disappoint. Covid is on. Now come here. They shared. They shared mm. so much. Um, so many people kina musical sheriff, kina Jo Mushiri. Kwanza Jo Mushiri shared a lot. Jo Mushiri is that guy. <laughs> na hata, mi hata si Joy Joanna na personally. Mm. He was like sharing it. Like, look at this artist that make funny a song, you know? And the, the, the pressure was building up on uh, this song. Mm. And uh, before I knew it, nika text you on management ya itana. And they said, um, uh, we will be giving you a call. Hey. So mimi ni metensa, kuja kuwa na maji for like two weeks, no clean clothes, and I have to go and meet her. And you're hungry. Niko hungry, sija shawa. And then, the next day in the morning, ni kiosko radio, I'm like getting a call from my tanner's manager. Sayo, nilikuwa na si Mumbai, so wakipiga na jaribu kushika, inakata. So unasema, guy, umse probably nafikiri, ya nalenda, na venye nataka yu opportunity. I tried, I picked the call. This time it was Etana, and said, Michael, uh, can you please come to the Sankara Hotel? Tuonge and see what we can do. I went there. Na kumbukata nilikopa, yu so ya fair. Kufika hapo, she hugged me. And I was sweating and I was scared because I was like, Dema nani hug ma zizi ngu watani chafu, like, I don't feel what they are being there, you know? I was feeling inadequate. The moment she hugged me, she hugged me for like three minutes or two minutes continuously. She was so touched by what I did. And she was like, tell me your story. And I told her my story, everything. And she was like, one day when we do a song, don't tell this story to anyone, but when we do that song with you, you'll tell that story because that song will change your life. We took a picture and I can pay a fare when I home, a cab. I'm telling you, Mimi, I've never met an artist who is as uh, humble as she is or as kind as she is. Mpaka Waleo. Um, I've worked with Kenyan artists, I've worked with international producers. I think she is one of the persons with the cleanest heart. I went home, waited for two years for the collaboration to happen. Finally it happened. Mm. 
and when I sent her my verse on the Pamoja song, uh, she was so happy. She was so happy. She didn't even like ask me to revisit it. She was like, this is this perfect. Is it. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. I love your voice. I love the words. Mm -hmm. uh, just let's do this. Now, nah, even though Pamoja. Mm, Ata I couldn't be any revise anything or any nothing. Yeah. So all this you did when, man, sorry, <laughs> mm -hmm. you did this <laughs> when she was away. You were doing yeah. this in like virtually, yeah. Yes. She was not yet here. No, I recorded the song here. And here, sent and then you sent it to her. Yeah. Okay. Then she came to Kenya just the other day. Yes. Yeah, because I remember when she came, mm -hmm. um, and I asked her the one thing that someone would do to get your attention. And she mentioned you. She said, Michael caught my attention. He did a lovely song. And I was like, hey, you know, when she said that, I said, I need to look for this, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> we need to hear how he actually did it. Yeah. Um, then when she came to Kenya, of course, she came purposely, one, because she had released an album. Even yes. the event was called Pamoja. Yes. So <coughs> um, were you aware that you were going to, like, did she contact you and tell you I'm coming and this is what you're going to do and everything? Um, she did contact me mm -hmm. uh, about the concert. And um, and the the thing is, the posters were released for the artists who are going to be performing. But then, mini kiangali a poster, siko kwa poster. Sasa nika juliza, like, what's going on? So nika pigia the event organizers who enyo alikuwa hapo. So uh, nikambiwa, even the show iliku imepa. So I contacted her because she's very good, uh, she's very kind. Uh, Kim chat, you reply. And she's the one personally yes, replying. Yes, personally. She replies so quickly, like, at Isaac could keep for long. Mm. So can you be, uh, talk to these guys and make it happen? But then I don't know what was happening because it's almost like uh, the guys who are on the ground, waliko mm. um, your placement kwa poster. So walikata kabisa. But then she called me herself, I can be come come to the sound check uh, to meet and uh, we do a song together on stage in preparation for tomorrow. So me Nikaenda and when Nilingia took your place when she saw me on stage, she was smiling and she was very happy. You know, uh, I felt welcome there. And I got on stage to Kafanya the sound check. And uh, now we were in preparation for, for the, the next day, uh, which unfortunately she could perform. Yeah. Uh, because uh, I don't know what happened, but there was uh, some things that didn't go right with the uh, organizers. And uh, it, it, it really hurt me to not perform there <laughs> because, um, because you see Mimi, uh, unlike uh, the other big artists who are on the album, I'm still kind of trying to find uh, my place in the music industry, especially being uh, kind of plagued by the Cassia covers. Mm. I call it that because in Kenya, ukianza kufanya covers, it's very hard for you to switch. Ah, okay. nataka stick na yo. Wakenya wanataka. Wakenya wanataka nga kitu wamezoe, awataki wazungushe. They want cover songs. Like, do a cover song, yeah? My job bad by had the band. Like me, but I request can the DJ and do a cover at this song. But then you see, I am an artist who has my own message. You can write. Yeah. Yeah. So staki kuishi tu on, and then sasa na hizo stress the covers ku block you. Percentage ni nusunusu eh, na taka yako yote. Me na taka yangu yote. Mm. So I felt really bad because I had so much to gain. I felt like I had so much to gain. Audience come if I performed there, it would have uh, kind of brought me a couple of uh, fans and all that. But then I was like, uh, me, I trust in God's plan. And I was like, Mazehu Dem, that is Etana, I'm a fan so much already for me, Kuni Kakoi album, Kuni, any cook that kind to me, I wouldn't ask for more, you know. This Malia Menifikisha, like Nina is a skuma from up, you know. and. Um, that's how it happened. I didn't get to perform. Yeah, yeah, because you didn't get to. But they actually, m I think it's only Nightboy who went on stage. Yes. I don't even think Waire was there. No, I didn't. Yeah, he didn't perform. perform. So, yeah. anyway, you're on story, your event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, then now, um, in that same period, I remember at that time she was putting the album for consideration, a Grammy consideration. Yes. Then later on, after I think eh, it was after she's performed, she's already gone back yeah. home. 
then we get the news that the album has been yeah. nominated for Grammys. Yeah. Now we don't we don't care. All <laughs> we know is that Mkenya <laughs> wetu ako hapo ndani. Yeah. How was that feeling for you? It was uh, the best feeling ever. Mm. I remember I could feel the tears uh, forming in my eyes immediately. I I was so happy I just couldn't hold back the joy. And you know why I, I, f I felt that that um, emotion Naioma chose is because I know how much I've put into the music. I know how much I've been fought by the promoters, yeah. by so many people. I, <laughs> I can't even go into that. Like, I see how many fight seriously. Because Unajua, one thing with me personally is that um, I'm very versatile. I can do any genre of music. Mm. I can do reggae, hip hop. And then I write songs, like I'm so hardworking like I write, I can write like three songs a day or record like seven songs a day. That's a lot. Right now I have like 500 songs plus. Really? Yes. Then you see recorded, see written. Recorded. Ready for release. Wow. So it's almost like our sewa like when I see your style inside me. You know, you can see someone that is determined. Mm. And you're like, Mazeo msi akikam, adatupea kompe. So Mimi, I was getting for kila mali. Kila mali. Unapata, umeitua, umeitua kwa show and then all of a sudden, tena hauko kwa yosho. Like, what's happening? There's someone, yeah. I just said. Yeah, there's someone. And there was this person that alikuja in Kenya to see me mm. before Etana and everything happened while I was doing covers. Mse alikuja kasema, mimi nimeona music yako mm. and I will make you a star. But you'll only become successful if you work with me. If you don't, you won't. I will ensure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I will ensure. You go nowhere. No, you will not succeed. Did you work with that person? No. Yeah, because what? I did not. But things became hard after I said no to him. I, me, I'm telling you. Ali niambia. Unona, unona hizi radio venye zinachezai mziki mm. yako. Kwa zinakumbuka, kuna time nilikuwa na chezwa. Show imeanza, ni na chezwa like 40 minutes ni ngoma zangu, purely Michael Bundy. Until wasa wale kwa wala nikona, wasema, kwa ni wu uli yeah, yeah, You know? And I'm like, me, wasema, these guys have been playing your songs for the last like 30 minutes. Kwa zika ni unona hizi radio venye zinachezai ngoma, I can tell them to stop. Okay. And they'll stop. And he, in fact, did it. Kutoka hiyo day, that specific radio, what? Vitu zika fungana everywhere. I go to a show like ni meito kwa TV show. Nikio ni mengia backstage ni mepewa mic na mbio you have to go home. You know, una yungi stage. I remember that happened for a very big, big show in Kenya. So, it was happening like that everywhere I go. <laughs> Block, blocked everywhere. So I decided, uh, that was, I decided to quit on music nisifanya tena. Yes, as a time after that, Nika Patana, my manager. So when my manager came, she came in with the financial strength and Yeleza could push music yangu oh. kiasi. So, so say time Nina Mbio, you nominated for uh, Grammys. Grammys. It's actually Vaire that called me to tell me that. Oh. <laughs> uh, he called me and he said, congratulations, man. And he was saying congratulations. Like, at us, congratulations to you, to too. You, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, he was saying, Mazei, do you, do you know what this means? Like, um, you probably don't know what this means. But it's mm. a heavy thing. But one day you'll understand, like, mm. um, this is a really big deal for you, you know? And uh, so something happened that your time I nearly feel like, Maze, this is all I've worked for all my life. And then Sasa Ndiyo may come. And then all these people that have fought me. And then the fact that ata kwa posta ya isho ya nyili kuna happen siku ya kwa. Ata uku. Ata like uku on like, stage. Eh, I was like, kwani these people wana nibebaje? Like, kwani wana wana? Because na kumbuka wani on stage, tukifanya sound check. Kwa hirake ya maleka niambia, but I hope you're performing too. Because you know your song is the main song. Yeah. Kwa hiyo alba, you know? Nika mambia, yes, I'm performing. So the next day, my fans on me, why were you not performing at the show? Like, we went there to see you perform. So I feel, actually, after that time, I feel so low. Like, what's happening? You've done so much I've to come so here. Much. Yeah, I needed this. So the moment I was like, calling everyone, telling them.
what has happened and i felt really good man i i genuinely am so proud of you like it's not easy because you know Thank now you. forever in your life you'll forever say i was part of an album that was nominated for grammys grammy c it's not a local thing <laughs> and it's very hard even for black people i know you've seen even the internet for yes. to, uh, to be nominated for grammys for black people it's a big deal yes. so man even even though they block you it's god's saying at the end of the day it's what he says yeah man okay wow so like we've come to your space me i've seen you've talked about your son i've seen toys that have made me get baby fever <laughs> on your videos i've also seen there's a boy there that's definitely your son yeah yes Oh, so <laughs> cute. Now, how is um, it being a father? Uh, being a father is the best thing that ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. It's the most precious and the best gift God ever gave me. I enjoy it. Actually, that's what I love doing in my life, spending time with my kids. and uh, Kids? Yeah. See, I thought you only have a son. <laughs> no, I have, I have uh, a daughter too. Oh. I was blessed with a daughter recently. Oh, look yeah. at you. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. no, it's the best thing because I have a very close relationship with my kids, the two of them. Uh, my boy is four years old. My daughter is like uh, five months old. Mm. They both uh, have the biggest smile when I walk in. Um, it's basically, it's, it's, it's unexplainable. I would I would cancel any concert just to spend time with them. With them. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And seeing like from where you've come from, how you were raised, would you yeah. feel like you need to change or to make <sighs> better or to do better or you know for the, your children not to feel like how you felt because you said of course growing up in a space where you're seeing your mother being beaten, your mother is bleeding, your mother has a cast, yeah. it gave you depression to a point even you having conditions even wetting your bed and everything else. Yeah. What is it that when you see your children, you're like, the one thing that I will do for you is this, to avoid you going through what I went through? Um, I decided to, to get therapy, mm -hmm. to heal the wounds that I carried from my childhood because they affected me in a way that I, I was also very irritable. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was very irritable. Before I went to therapy, I used to get very angry. Like, uh, I could shout, you know. And, 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 uh, really? No, we learn you. You're so soft spoken. <laughs> but it would take so, so much mm -hmm. to get me there, like so much provocation, because I'm very uh, soft spoken, yes, as you say. Yeah, you're chilled. So I went to therapy mm. and. Uh, I went for three months, and I was made to understand that uh, if not careful, I could repeat the same thing that happened to me. In your family. In my family. I could project my anger to my kids, so I needed to heal. And after three months, I was uh, okay. And um, after that, uh, my daughter was born, and I got back into therapy. Um, last week 10 and now mm. but this uh, this is for like uh, clearing up uh, mm. anything that might That's remain yeah, that basically even when i went there my therapist said uh, there is some you know? improvement there is so much improvement mm. so i knew that if i heal i'm not gonna hurt my son and he's gonna have a better life than you did also if i am in a position where my relationship is turning out to be the same thing that mom and dad were having violent. I resolved in my mind that it was the best thing to walk away. Because mm. Mimi, I was like, Eri mom, I was telling my mom, mom, Eri ungeishia, but I love to dad. Mimi ungeishia better life yeah, than to go up. But mom, I like, your dad loves you, you know? Yeah. It's, it's just that, and I was made to understand this by my therapist, kuna that generation of baby boomers, like they went through so much during the colonial period. Mm. So they had no way to deal with pain and emotional hurt. So that's why most of them would project these things and all that. So I got to understand it. And I actually got to go back to my parents and tell them, this was not okay. This hurt oh, me. Okay. Yeah, Leonie Hill mm. told my dad this was not okay. This hurt me really bad. How was that conversation? I can imagine telling your dad, Jackie, dad. <sighs> 
what you are hmm. doing here was not good. <laughs> An African parent especially. See easy. See easy. Most of the times they don't say anything about it. They just stay quiet. But at least they know. And mm. nowadays things changed. You know, they're still together and th all that ended. But then mm. I got to experience it. In when it, it up on yeah. And they never understood like where my depression was coming from because they were like, Asa unajaribu kujua kwa nini? You know, they don't understand that. Even depression in an African setting <laughs> is, what is that? Yeah, I got to heal after talking to them. My mom was very receptive, she understood it. Yeah, so I'm now okay. Wow, I like that. I like yeah. that now you're in a safe space to even raise your children in a good way. Yeah. You're a good person. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you thus far, you're a very nice person. Thank you. Um, anything else you'd want to tell your people? What plans? Actually, before you even get there, yeah. in this year, I think w other than the Grammy nomination, is there any other highlight? Oh, your daughter. <laughs> 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 My daughter, yes. Mm -hmm. um, there's another highlight. I'm working on uh, an album Ooh. that's actually supposed to be released before mid of December this month. This month. So, so before we work, we have an album. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's called 100 Degrees East. Um, it's a really, it's a fire album. That's actually the why it's called 100 Degrees. It's very hot. It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on this album, I've uh, featured some really good artists. Like, uh, they I've worked with Delando from Jamaica. Mm. Uh, he's a really nice guy, big up Delando. And uh, I've worked with um, also Kenyan artists in it. I've, I've worked with uh, Popcorn's producer. He's hey. producing two tracks on that. that. That, by the way, came after the Grammy. Your oh, Grammy, <laughs> your so <laughs> CV, Isha <laughs> <Hamza>. <laughs> Like, you know, when you start your conversation with that, uh, you're like, They're like yeah, yeah. when I'm so serious. Yeah. So, Popcorn's producer, actually, his name is Sasein. Um, uh, he producing on my to block traffic at Popcorn. And recently, as last night, he agreed to fully produce my next album, too. So, after the album, we are working on another, another album with one. him. Now Popcorn and I come Kenya, by the way. Popcorn? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. Probably you might hear me and him on some hey, track someday. You hey, never know. The blessings yeah. are coming your way. Sindewa? They're coming. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, I'm working with uh, Chronic's uh, producer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Boston Bean. He produced Skanking Sweet. Skanking. Yeah. Groovy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm also working with Tory Lane's producer. Hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> On the same album. Hey, <laughs> this is the new, it's so 100 degrees. <laughs> it's 100 degrees, mm. yeah. Mazei Kona, like, uh, really good producers. From Kenya, uh, three tracks have been produced by Vicky Pondis. Vicky Pondis. Tracks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Mazei, you have to look out for that. That one Definitely. will be Definitely, that's really a fire one. Yeah. Man, that's really nice. Now I was going to ask your plans for before the year ends. We have it. <laughs> Do yeah. Do yeah. Man, Michael, I'm, I'm really, really proud of you for this far that you've come. And I've told you, Thank your you. blessings are still on the way. Usha check you. Usha anza ku. Ku penya to you. Yeah, any message you have for your fans as we conclude this? <sighs> for my fans, basically, I would like to tell them that you should seek therapy. My feeling is that everyone should seek therapy. At all, I say, when I feel like, okay. Mm -hmm. Like, before you even decide to raise kids, before you decide to even do some of the most critical things, just get some help. Because uh, I've lost friends to depression, to suicide. I never liked doing that. And it, it, it honestly hurts so much. And to the artists, when you want to muziki, when you want to try to get into the industry, they just get some education. Mm. Mimi, I wish I knew so many things, like study the business of music, know so much, know about licensing, royalties, joy of it was Because it's just it a mess. Takuna upload Tungoma, Una Dungoma studio, Una upload Ngoma YouTube, Una Pelega Gwa TV, Bas, Una Fkiria now because you're getting views, you're money. getting your money. Study it, mm. license your music properly, cater for everything. Dio, Ata Ukipada, 1000 views, you're getting something Some. from mm. it. Yeah, that's all. Oh man, yeah. thank you so much, Michael. Mm. 
it's been real guys for the first time guys i've seen me in my emotional state but yeah thank you very much michael for having us and yeah from michael and i, I think we'll say bye for now bye information yeah what you know missing say doesn't matter where you're coming from but it matters where you plan to go you should know oh i said it will be buried beneath the ground seem to die but it will grow oh cause out of the darkness there must come light and if we're to win we must stand and fight how can we expect to truly progress with all this damn imaginary lies? Look how much we've been through, yet still we survive. There's not a mountain that we cannot climb. We know the power that we have inside, and all that we could do if we were united. Hey, come together now, in my ear. Oh, Africa, come together, come together, come together. Information, yeah. What you know, oh, so me sing, say, eh, kuja pamoja, I me say kuja pamoja, eh, kuja pamoja, me say kuja pamoja, eh, me say kuja pamoja, I say kuja pamoja, eh, oh Africa, oh Africa.